to West Asia now, which is bracing for yet another war. Iran versus Israel. Israel has allegedly hit the border areas of Aqwin Itira as it shelled pro-Iran targets in southern Syria. It happens practically every week, sometimes more than once a week. Israel allegedly attacks Iranian interests in Syria. Welcome everyone to a new episode of AKTKGO. If I tell you that today's topic deals with the current war, the first thought that will pass your mind is that we will be discussing the Russia-Ukraine war. But you will be wrong in thinking so. The reason is that there is another war which is going on today and we don't see much about it on the news because it is a war which is being fought in the shadows. Today we will be discussing the shadow war which is going on between Israel and Iran. So without further ado, let us take a deep dive into the meat of the topic. If I tell you that historically Israel and Iran have been friends, it might come as a shock to you because one is a Jewish majority country and the other is predominantly a Shia majority country. You might wonder why am I focusing on the word Shia majority and not Muslim majority. And the reason is that it was Iran's Shiaism which was at the heart of the friendship between the two opposing ideologies. How so? Let us take a look. There is a saying that the enemy is the enemy is a friend and it is a logic which brought both countries together. If you look at the map, Israel is surrounded by hostile Arab nations like Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria and also Palestine, which everyone knows is a disputed territory. But what few people know is that Golan Heights which borders with Syria and Shaba Farms which borders with the Lebanon are also disputed. After the Suez War of 1956, Gamal Abdel Nasser, the Egyptian president, he had gained significant power in world politics and he was the prime voice behind pan-Arabism and uh, Palestinian liberation movement. Israel had to find new friends to counter the Arab threat and the then Israeli president David Ben-Gurion, uh, he adopted the periphery doctrine. Israel, Iran, Ethiopia and Turkey all became a part of this doctrine due to common fears. The Shah of Iran on the other hand wanted to counter Iraqi threat and also wanted to win favours from the Kennedy administration, which was critical of that regime. The Shah of Iran was under the impression that getting closer to Israel will help Iran get closer to USA. Israel had beaten the combined strength of Egypt, Syria and Jordan. After Israel winning the war, the Shah thought that getting closer to Israel would help him strengthen Iran's influence on world politics. Thus, both the parties benefited from the doctrine. So as you can see, theoretically, it made pragmatic sense for the two natural enemies to be friends. But sometimes some things which look good theoretically doesn't turn out well practically. Was it the same case between these two friends or did they manage to mutually benefit each other? Let us take a look. As we established earlier, Iran and Israel had a common geopolitical interest which led to sustained cooperation between these two countries. But the question arises, what did they do for each other? Let us have a look. In the 1960s, the Iraqi Kurds were fighting the central regime of Iraq and sensing the opportunity of destabilizing Iraq, Israel started supporting the Iraqi Kurds with the help of Mossad. Iran also thought that this was a golden opportunity which could not be missed. So Iran's intelligence agency also got involved with the Iraqi Kurds in destabilizing Iraq. The Mossad has also formed a trilateral intelligence alliance with Iran and Turkey. The code name of this alliance was Trident and they performed joint counter-intelligence operations. The cooperation between Iran and Israel was not just limited to intelligence and espionage. They also had extensive economic and energy cooperations. One of the prime examples of this was the company Trans-Asiatic Oil, which was a top secret partnership between Israel and National Iranian Oil Company. This partnership proved to be beneficial especially to Iran during the 1973 Arab oil boycott of USA and Europe. The Arab countries, they wanted to punish USA and Europe for their support to Israel. But guess 
who did not join this boycott it was iran the demand of iranian oil grew and their revenues also increased iran invested its profits to further strengthen its relationship with israel by launching project flower where iran invested heavily in arms and ammunition research and development projects led by israel clearly both countries were working for their own self interest but their self interest matched and both advanced and developed militarily and economically with the aid of this new found love and friendship for each other but some friendships are not meant to last a lifetime especially if the friendships are political so what were the circumstances which led to the breakup of this circumstantial friendship and made them sworn bitter enemies let us have a look it was believed that the 1979 islamic revolution of iran will lead to the death of the rapport between iran and israel but it wasn't so the persian gulf countries had formed the gulf cooperation council in 1981 and also aided saddam hussein against iran iran still needed israel as a friend because it needed weapons and advanced technology which israel supplied going against the diktat set by usa of not supplying iran with any weapons this cooperation continued until the late 90s but by the following decade the rivalry between iran and israel became well established and visible what happened to make the rivalry well established and visible let us take a look taliban and saddam hussein the two age old foes of iran were destroyed and iran no longer needed israel even during the iran iraq war kohimani's famous slogan was the path to jerusalem is paved through karbala after the fall of iraq iran strengthened its ties with hamas and hezbollah which were destabilizing the borders of israel as israel was fighting hezbollah and hamas it realized that the key to solving its border insurgencies was to curb the growing iranian influence iraq was also developing its nuclear capabilities which further elevated israel's fears Iran was indirectly fighting Israel through Hamas and Hezbollah. Iran for its part started viewing Israel as a threat because Iran knew that Israel was the sole regional obstacle in Iran's path to becoming the leader of Islamic world. Iranian President Ahmad Din Ejaz's anti-Semitic statements and Holocaust denials in 2005 also added fuel to the fire and now the rivalry was out in the open. The three major factors which had forced Iran and Israel to come together were Nazarism, Soviets and Iraq. All three factors are non-existent today and there always were fundamental ideological differences present. between the two nations since the beginning it was these factors which kept these ideological differences at bay but today with these factors no longer present the gloves are off and the rivalry is out in the open so how are the two nations fighting this war so covertly let us have a look both iran and israel had now identified themselves as rivals of each other but instead of fighting it out in the open both decided to use covert tactics iran funded terror organizations like hezbollah and hamas and israel retaliated by carrying out air strikes against iranian presence in syria assassinating iranian scientists and also developing the stuxnet virus which caused substantial damage to the iranian nuclear program This is a war being fought in the shadows and we are going to throw some light on it. In November 2010, Majid Shehriyari, an Iranian nuclear scientist was assassinated and it was alleged that Israel had a hand in the assassination. In July 2011, another Iranian scientist was assassinated and again fingers were pointed at Israel. On January 11, 2012, Mustafa Ahmadi Roshan, a nuclear scientist was killed in a car explosion and an Iranian citizen was hanged in the killing since Iran alleged that he had links with Mossad. Iran was quick to point fingers at Israel for all these killings and asserted that this was Israel's plan to stop its nuclear program. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a 2012 UN meeting famously had shown a diagram 
to show the amount of uranium needed by Iran to build a bomb. The assassinations briefly stopped in 2013 when Tehran went on a negotiating table with USA and other western powers. In 2015, the joint comprehensive plan of action was signed between Iran and P5 plus 1 countries, under which Iran agreed to eliminate its stockpile of medium enriched uranium. In 2018, President Donald Trump withdrew from the JCPOA and this emboldened Iran to step up its nuclear weapon development activities. April 2021, Iran blamed Israel and vowed revenge for an explosion at its largest uranium enriched facility in Netanz, which it said caused significant damage to its centrifuges. A few days back, the Defense Minister of Israel, Yuav Galant, revealed some mind-boggling and stunning numbers regarding the amount of funding the Iranian regime is providing to its terror proxies each year. Are you ready? So let's go. $700 million per year provided by the Iranian regime to Hezbollah. $100 million a year provided by the Iranian regime to Hamas. Tens of millions provided by Iran to Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Hundreds of millions each to Shia militias in Syria and Iraq. Hundreds of millions more to the Houthis in Yemen. And lastly, according to Yoav Kalan, billions to the Assad regime in Syria. Folks, the withdrawal of USA from JCPOA also emboldened Israel to step up their attacks against Iran. President Biden promised to get restore JCPOA, but so far, nothing has done on that front. If reports are to be believed, USA and other Western powers, they have given their tactical approval to Israel to continue with their attacks since they do not want to further engage with Iran and they see a low-key war as the only way to deter Iran from developing a nuclear weapon. It has also not helped that Iran has provided support to Russia in the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. Another key point to note here is that even today, Iran does not even care about diplomacy since its nuclear capability has strengthened. Iran is closer than ever to reach military nuclear capabilities. In the face of this threat, we must act in one or two ways military action or credible military threat. This was a statement from Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. In January 2023, Israel carried out a drone attack on a military site in the Iranian city of Isfahan. In the very same month, Israel had also attacked the pro-Iranian militant group in Syria, which closed down the Damascus airport. Iran retaliated by attacking a tanker ship owned by Israeli businessmen. And in February 2023, Israel uh, targeted an Iranian official's meeting in Damascus. From Feb to April 2023, Israel faced rockets from Gaza Strip, rockets from Lebanon, an Iranian drone from Syria, and terror attacks in West Bank. Israel, though, will not keep quiet, and in a strongly worded statement, Yon Galant said that Israel will continue to systematically damage Iranian assets and capabilities and will not allow Iran to establish establish an Iranian army in Syria. Also, it will not allow the Golan Heights to become Lebanon. Iran has been active in Iraq, Lebanon, Gaza and Yemen. And now it is also threatening to infiltrate Bahrain, Afghanistan and West Africa. Israel directly is already sharing three borders with Iran and this rightly is a grave matter for Israel. But what will be the future repercussions and can it lead to a full-blown war between these two countries? How will the other countries react? Let us discuss. Iran needs allies today. And in a shocking diplomatic incident, Iran and Saudi Arabia have shaken hands with China acting as the peace broker. Israel, on the other hand, has the tactic approval of the West because convincing American citizens of waging a war in Middle East will be a difficult task for President Biden. US Ambassador to Israel, Mr. Thomas Knights, said recently that Israel can and should do whatever they need to do to deal with Iran. Old foes has become friends and old friends has become foes, which has led to a dynamic political shift. Though the question arises, 
where will the shift lead there are severe anti government protests going on in iran and it is speculated that iranian people are looking for an opportunity to overthrow the current regime the iranian government has repressed their protest with brutality by carrying out mass executions forceful imprisonments and killing hundreds of protesters because of these mass uprisings the iranian government see threats around every corner and if it feels that outside nations are interfering in their national politics with the intention to overthrow them the situation could grow very volatile it has already attacked the kurdish regions of iraq claiming they are responsible for igniting the protests iran might react very strong against israel as well and no one exactly knows where their nuclear program has reached since after the usa left jcpoa the monitoring of their program has been stopped the israeli government is also facing protests because of their new judicial reforms hundreds and thousands of people have taken to the streets to protest against the new reforms which limits supreme court's power to overturn laws and gives the politicians more control israel can step up their attacks against iran and its allied terrorist organizations to appease the public and also now that the us has become a mute spectator there is nothing to stop israel from taking more drastic actions the recent actions already suggest that they have taken a step in that direction All in all the situation is becoming more turbulent and explosive day by day and somebody has to step in USA and Europe can develop an interim JCPOA strategy for Iran just to buy some time and to curb the situation before it completely gets out of hand politics is completely unpredictable and many experts were of the opinion that Russia would never attack Ukraine and there was no possibility of war but they were proven wrong In this case there are defense analysts who believe that an all out war is not a possibility and we hope that this time they are right thank you for watching if you liked our video please subscribe to the channel like the video and share it with your friends and if you want to support us please support us through patreon